everybody, it's Krusty Old Crow back again to do another tactical perspective on a G.I. Joe classified product that has been recently made available. I am, of course, going to talk about today Hasbro Pulses number 141 for the classified line, the Twilight Guard and the Steel Core Commander. You'll notice I've already chopped up my box because I don't intend to talk too much about the box because the box doesn't have its normal layout. It doesn't have what it usually has, which is the diagram of everything you're getting for a piece count in there. Why? Because I suspect they understood what I understood after I opened this kit. It wouldn't make any sense if you saw it. You just have to get it home and they need you to bring it home. And that's what this box is showing you. Look at this conflict. I call this a battle over kit. All right. A kit fight, if you will. Not a cat fight, a kit fight. These guys are fighting over each other's kit left and right. Look, three things they want you to pay attention to. The Illuminati-esque brassard on the Twilight Commander. If you look, go look at your money. Go look for that eyeball and pyramid. See where you've seen that before. Or perhaps the Steel Core Commander emblem on the other brassard or the steel casings. Uh, not much else they want you to pay attention to, uh, which is a damn shame. Uh, you got your primary combat functions on there and you got your QR code to nowhere, but this time it's red and blue. Why? Because this is the first time Hasbro has given us a good guy, bad guy set in the classified line. It's not the first time they've ever done it in the G.I. Joe line. Not at all. But it's the first time they've done it in the classified line and that's pretty cool. All right, guys, so of course we have to show you the side box art and this is what I do with my side box art now. So there we have them, number 141, the focus of today's discussion, the Twilight Guard and the Steel Core Commander. Now I had many questions when I got this set home. All right, one, who's the Twilight Guard? Two, why is the Steel Core Commander drawing so much attention to himself with so much shiny gold on his helmet. But I mean, I had to get these things home. I had bad vibes about them. I'm not going to lie. I did. I didn't think I was going to enjoy either of them. As it turns out, I definitely enjoy one and the other remains a confounding mystery to me. And we're going to talk about both of them with our standard head to toe reviews, but we lack file cards for these. The closest thing we have for a connection to these in the past is the fact that the Steel Core Commander is in command of the Steel Core, and the Steel Core were something we had in the 80s line. It was the mail-in offer with the, the other helmet on. Uh, the mail-in offer that allowed you to create a G.I. Joe character after yourself. It was a brilliant design. It attached the fan base even more to the toys they loved, and they essentially built their own version of this guy. And they had a little checklist of, you know, you could be Navy, Army, Air, uh, type of things. It was almost like a choose your own character, little descript, and then they sent it to you. And I thought that was really cool. That was uh, that was bold for its time. And G.I. Joe was good for those mail-ins with those flag points, right? Something that now we only see with uh, its rival company, Valiverse, and their action points, right? What a shame, what a shame, what a shame. Anyways, I'm not going to go on a tirade about how bad the past was better than the present. Not that guy, okay? So we are talking about the Steel Core Commander of the Steel Core and what he's going to be coming with. And we are going to be talking about the Twilight Guard, uh, who uh, you can clearly see is a mix of the Cobra Officer kit and good old Crimson Guard, right? But... There's aesthetics at play that make him fall in line very well with guys like the Techno Viper, the, um, who's the other one, the Tele Viper, and Mindbender with those purples at play, purple and black, right? Uh, the black allows him to go with a lot of things. 788, sure. Crimson Guard, yeah, he kind of looks like their unique hero commander, right? Uh, even Iron Grenadiers to the po this point already. He looks quite at home. In fact, that's probably where he belongs is with the Iron Grenadiers. But I have no lore on the Twilight Guard. So if you guys have the lore on the Twilight Guard or if there's existing lore on the Steel Core Commander and I just missed it and I wasn't thinking of it and I didn't do my research, uh, you can call me out in the comments. You know, I, I welcome those comments, guys. Uh, but we're going to switch these over to the spindles. We're going to talk about them. We're going to give them the head to toe. We'll give them a play grade, attack grade, and a je ne sais quoi grade, which is French Canadian for, uh, I don't know what it is, but, and we'll deposit something because I do have some strong opinions on this, guys. Uh, it's not often I go into a review on a gray day 
with poor lighting and say, I've got to follow through. And it's not because this kit is new. It's because this kit has a lot of things to talk about. Not all of them good. I'm going to warn you, but not all of them bad. And remember, it's my show. It's a tactical perspective. It's just one way to see these things. This is how I'm seeing them. So you don't have to agree, right? You don't even have to order it because it's Hasbro Pulse exclusive. <laughs> um, but if you do want it, unfortunately, it's also Hasbro Pulse exclusive. Uh, so without any further ado, just one last reminder, if you like my videos, like, share, subscribe, and we can keep growing this channel because I'm having a lot of fun, guys, and we have crossed that 500 mark which means I have to really think about what I'm going to do for this channel to make it even more special in year number two. All right, guys, let's get into this review. So in this cat or cat fight or kit fight, as it really is, here's contestant number one, your Twilight Guard. The one you're probably going to want to troop, troop build a little bit. You're going to want a few of these. I do. Just in time for Halloween with that black, that purple, that silver, that gray, and that pumpkin orange sitting on that left shoulder. It all, for some reason, works really well. Maybe it's a Darth Vader Kanuba wax shine on that helmet. That's working the most for me right now. But the way it's offset with that silver, it's almost easy to forget that that's a Crimson Guard head. But we've seen it with Python Patrol and Crimson Guard. Of course, we know it is. The torso is the uh, Cobra Officer torso. And the legs, I think, are probably from that same kit i'm not sure where the legs are from nor do i care the buck itself works really well we've always liked the cobra officer we have it's always been a very flexible kit but because it's flexible you can see that the brassards that the twilight guard sports here are only secured in the same manner as the original steel legion ones were earlier in the line meaning they're just a bicep strap and that's it they will sink down as you pose your figure you'll have to continue to rework them the cape uh, is worked into the actual webbing gear, under layered a little bit. So it's not going to shift around and get, uh, get misplaced or anything. It's going to be hard to take on and off, I think, a little bit. But it's, it's not interfering with the backpack at, at all, which is the most important part of, for this kit as I see it right now. And in fact, I actually rather hate that backpack, and I have for quite a while. Not uh, not the backpack so much as the kit that it represents as itself is coming with. Uh, the the Cobra Crimson Guard head reused into this uh, Twilight Guard's uh, shinier head. Already had limited enough up-down look with the articulation points in the neck. Uh, now it's encumbered even more so uh, because it's got this big honking Bergens on there. So let's get rid of that because we're going to have a look at those weapons later and talk about it in a bit. He's got his humble battle knife and he's got his sword from the original Crimson set. And he's got a nice silver pistol which becomes the bone of contention in this set. Can you believe that this pistol or the gold pistol become these sought after commodities? Because as you'll see, we get two pistols, but we get three holsters in this set. Or at least that's what my recount and recount and recount of the pieces keep showing me. And again, you don't have a frame of reference for that on the back of the box, by the way. How many pieces you're getting. That was unusual to me, but I can move on. I will instead talk about the color sets at play because I think it's brilliant what's going on with the Twilight Guard. You got gloss black all over the place, but you got a little bit of toned down, less gloss black in there and some of the accoutrements like his gloves and his uh, pants, more or less, right? Uh, you've got silver, silver in the mask, silver in the forehead, silver in the emblem, the officer emblem, which makes it confusing that this guy's a troop builder so far. I'm wondering if he's going to come back later with a, or if Hasbro will build an actual Twilight guard trooper and just name this guy the officer 
Moving on with the colors, you got that orange with the black, silver, and red, all crammed into one big brassard on his left shoulder. And if you look carefully into the emblem of the uh, the red, you will see an Illuminati eye in the pyramid in there, right? Suggesting the very highest of authority is behind the Twilight Guard. You can see the purples have worked out. Uh, they're kind of minimalized on the figure and more about the accessories, although there is purple on this figure in the collarbone region and under the arms. Most of it is black and gray and silver. Uh, the, the accessories, such as the sword sheath and all these uh, gung-ho weapons, by the way, that's the original source mold of them, uh, they're all working this black and purple, which really works with it. In fact, the energy weapons actually have a bit of red at the end of them, which works so much better than when they first showed us these weapons and it's as one monotone color that matched the backpack that was Gong Ho's kit from uh, Operation Blackout, the first earlier designs of the classified line. Uh, not a big fan of the canister gun, never have been, never will be, nor am I a fan of the other guns uh, because of how they they uh, they work on that backpack. I didn't find that backpack held them very well. I was almost going to edit this out, but I wanted to show you just an example of the Brassard, right? Three or four poses, move the arm down to the side, and it goes down. So I should have probably corrected that, but it was... Uh, I probably had it right next to the video I reshot. Nonetheless, it was I wanted to show you just the plain posing you can do with him. He does look regal, like I said, with that black cape on the red inside. This character folds in well with a lot of your line already. If you stand him in front of your Crimson Guard, he's the balls. If you stand him beside uh, anyone in the Iron Grenadiers, he's looking for the balls. But you probably got a few more of them. You could put him anywhere in the line, I think, and he just fits at home, especially besides Techno Vipers and um, Tele Vipers because of that purple and Mindbender. This, to me, the Twilight Guard is going to be my Mindbender's personal retinue. I don't know if they're designed for the Iron Grenadier, but I do like these. However, I think I'm only buying one more set because... As much as I really like this and the idea of getting more of these, I really have an issue with the other one in this set. So I'm going to give this one the, uh, the I'm going to give the whole set. It's play grade, tack grade, and, um, and uh, je ne sais quoi grade all at the end. But uh, yeah, this one, the superior figure in the in the pairing for sure. And I think from what I've seen of the, the guys doing the reviews on it so far, that's been the feedback. So now we'll just uh, go have a look at the, the uh, Steel Core Commander that comes with this set. And I'll give you my thoughts on that in a minute. So, also included in set 141 of the G.I. Joe Classified line, Twilight Guard versus Steel Core Commander, the Joe versus Cobra box set, the first of its kind. This is what we're coming out with for Joe's. We're getting a Steel Core Commander who the buck looks great. I know it's a reuse of the, the same buck that they used for... Um, for wreckage and whatnot or beachhead uh it's got the low light legs it's got the standard uh packs that come with the, the like the the standard leg and uh leg holster and uh first aid pack that comes with the standard steel core stuff but it's got two holsters and 
there's only two pistols in the set. So the puzzles start coming with the accessories right away. Steel cord vest we've seen before repainted with that, you know, that chest knife. And then the brassards, which we've seen again, uh, now being reused and, and probably just as well as they were the first time the steel core came out. They're being used again with a new insignia on the back denoting that he's the commander. We have a new color set at play. We have green on very dark German blue, like Luftwaffe blue. And it doesn't match with the with the weapon sets, but we'll talk about that later. It does match with the helmet, but in the most kind of awkward ways. The helmet is also that kind of grayish blue Luftwaffe, whatever you call it, tone. But then we have this gold that uh, sits on that helmet. And while it looks appealing, it's a nice gold. And it's got this black that is down all, uh, around the lower part of it. And even if you were to look again at the box photos, it seems like they've had a very difficult time trying to get that black over that gold. It just, it seemed very problematic for them to get clean lines around the shapes of the helmet where they wanted them black. And as a result, mine actually has a lot of bad paint applications. If you look at the far right of the three black marks on his lower mouth there, you'll see they missed that thing completely and, and put a, another line of black in between the two. It's just, it's, it was a really poor paint application. And this is what I'm trying to say about it. G.I. Joe logo, the red, white, and blue, because it was an all-American hero. Uh, that was the way to go. And we didn't need to see it in the, the color sets of the costume. But as you fast forward through the re-envisioning of Joe, you get the golden black logo of the eagle head. And now they feel a need to reflect this in the steel core somehow with a golden black and the gray helmet. And the colors, that that just doesn't work for uh, somebody who's supposed to be of high important status to stand out amongst them all. If they were going to work with the black and gold, they should have all had the black and gold. Now the commander is clearly identified on the battlefield. All I have to tell a sniper is say, when you go to the Joes, if anyone's wearing a gold helmet, just kill that guy and go home, right? If he has a gold pistol, he's really important. Um, I'm, I'm just being tongue-in-cheek about it, but it just it, it works only with certain aspects of this. If I had seen a different weapons loadout, maybe this had worked. But what we got instead was this conundrum of the steel core kit mixed with a little bit of rock and roll and a contest of who can get mutts uh, or grunts uh, C7 carbine between him and the Twilight Guard. And while you're at it, one of you needs to snatch an extra pistol off the other. Uh, on top of that, we have to go with this bright Toronto Maple Leaf blue. So I'm just going to focus on that gold pistol for a second. It's a Rockstar pistol, but it's got no blast effect port as it came out. That's why I've been showing you the silver one with the smoke effects and the blast effects. But the gold one looks just as cool. Somehow, no blast effects. So if you want to have blast effects, then I guess you're going to give your Steel Court Commander the silver pistol. But if you want it to match his helmet, you can't have blast effects. And if you want him to have the two holsters filled up, uh, put them in there. Otherwise, you're taking a piece of kit off your character today. Uh, one of the holsters. And good luck getting the waist one off. So I guess you're going to go with that leg one, eh? That's a weird thing to have to do is to remove kit from a character that came on it on the, uh, on the buck direct. Yeah, what are you going to do? And I'll say it, I said it before and I'll say it again. Like, I don't hate that helmet. I hate the paint app. I think they really messed it up on the lower parts. Um, and just dedicating this to a commander is so on the nose, dead giveaway, that no one would do it. Even Wreckage's yellow helmet could be less of a liability because... Gold is a metallic paint. It's a re very reflective shine, and there's no mistaking it, okay? So it's just very much bold and in your face. Now, it's not like this guy came with the jump pack the other steel core did to get out of the battlefield if so, Sniper did identify him. No, no, he's uh, he's wearing the black Cadillacs. 
the original ground pounders as they were the black boots right and there's nothing wrong with the black boots or the 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 legs the low light legs but again you go up in the holster accessories confounding the other leg accessories dropping on there and i don't know if it's necessary to have it and if so could we not have gotten a bit of color on it because this was a repaint project reuse project but the way that the black uh, black leg accessories uh, the holster and the first aid kit just kind of stand out as, oh yeah, we better throw those on. Uh, it doesn't work. The The whole thing as a main trooper uh, or the if this guy had come out as the first jump infantry, I would have bought droves of this guy and said, no worries. But then you add the ridiculous blue repainted weapons that don't even match the buck. And I'm just waiting for this to forward through it. Uh, and I wanted you to see the difference between the pistols. But as you see these weapons with them, you say, hey, I've seen them before. So the only one I really liked for it was Grunt's C7. Uh, that's what the Canadians call, sorry, your M16, your M4 carbine type. With his little, uh, his little sight on top. Uh, it looks good with the figure. This looks great as a troop builder. But I can't get around the fact that they decided to call it the Steel Corps Commander. And that was their intention. And uh, it's a, you, if you, you can really see that paint app on that helmet, right? Articulation-wise, posability, it's great. It's fine. Uh, you have the only the same issues you had with the Steel Corps and the chest and hinge because of that rig. But actually, the Brassards on this are far more secure than they are on the Twilight Guard. I enjoy this figure every time I think of him just as a regular troop builder. It's not the most exciting figure, but it isn't it isn't terrible. But it doesn't make sense as a commander. And again, I get to the kit. And here's one of them now. The uh, the you can see the blue. It's a nice regal, like like I said, a Toronto maple leaf, kind of bright blue. But it certainly doesn't match anything else on that. So why would they paint it that color? What's the sense there? Is the Steel Core team color regal blue, or is it metallic like steel? Uh, the blast effects you get are the same usual assortment. Of course, that jump pack and jump helmet didn't come with it. I was just testing to see how things looked and wanted to show you guys because I knew I was going to be talking semi-negatively about this figure, but I wanted to show you the potential it has for some of the things you may already have in your line for inner collectability and kit bashing. I don't usually want to talk about blast effects too much, uh, but you know like they have their purpose they're great for photographers and all that other stuff but the one that really broke my heart was that m203 one okay first it's not an m203 it's just a grenade launcher but this underslung barrel at the bottom there with the blast port on the end his hands on the blue piece to cock it back uh, and reload it that's your grenade launcher there the blast effect on top is your grenade launcher blast effect, the large release of cloud and gases due to the overpressurization needed to, to launch a larger projectile. That's what you want for your grenade launcher. But because the, uh, the, the end of the barrel and the, the uh, muzzle goes past the end of the grenade launcher, you can't do that. You cannot achieve that with these blast effects. So blast effects that are out don't always work for a lot of their weapons, even though they tell you, hey, well, they, we, got the, uh, we got the holes in there for you. Great. So what's up with this kit? We got a couple of things with and without uh, holes for them and pistols. Uh, and then we get the laser rifles, which I don't really care that there's no blast effect uh, holes for them because they don't work with them anyways. But could you not have come up with some sci-fi blast effects? Are you not intending to do sci-fi blast effects later in the line as we get to some of the more ridiculous characters, I wonder? Or is weapons and effects going to continue to be a complete crapshoot, something you throw in at the last minute after challenging your designers to get real creative with used goods? Because I'll give the designers credits for getting get, getting real creative with used goods. They've done that. But as far as the weapons, it doesn't look like they got much support on this one. Uh, so, yeah, overall, guys, I'm going to tell you right now, my, my, my Steel Corps commander does not carry the company support weapon that is the M60. That made even less sense. But it is there for troop building, clearly, and I'm, I'm just chuckling about it. It just seemed like the most ridiculous I had for this kit. 
I mean, somehow that got chosen over a ju jump pack uh, or even an extra belt of ammo crisscrossed across him so that he could use the first belt and tuck it away somewhere on him. There was just no thought into what to do with this stuff. He can't even clip the box onto his side. Then, yeah, and no backpack to stow anything. So it's just this this one out of the two feels like the worst deal of them and you have to get this guy if you really like the twilight guard um so my collecting of this will be minimal and that's okay i'm happy i bought it i don't feel i don't feel like i i gave too much money for this kit or got robbed i just feel like this is one of those times where i just cannot give a good review to one of these figures and it's sad because this is the first time they've done a joe versus cobra in classified so of the two it's the twilight guard i favor but now i'm going to give this box set a grade so 141 of the uh, G.I. Joe classified line, G.I. Joe versus Cobra, Twilight Guard versus Steel Core Commander. It's going to get attack grade of uh, 3.5. I give it this because the Twilight Guard has been identified just as a guard. He's been given no designated status and no explained status uh, that makes him seem like he's anything more than uh, a follower, not a leader. While his counterpart in the box, the Steel Corps Commander, looks very much like uh, he's the dumbest commander out there on the battlefield or the ballsiest. His stuff just doesn't match up and he definitely feels like a very lackluster effort of a commander compared to this guy and how he feels as a commander, not as a general infantry. I find the loadouts for the Steel Corps Commander very confusing, uh, not just in color sense, but in just why. Why an M60 for a commander? I get the troop building factor, but then why make him a commander? You would have sold more of these if you hadn't called him commander, I would think. And overall, while I really enjoy the idea, especially for the business sense of having your consumer buy both sides of your property, Cobra and Joe, I do not understand why this pairing came out the way it did. If you're going to build troop builders, build troop builders. Don't build a troop builder and then an individual character, uh, especially confuse the images as such. So on that tax sense, I, I just, like I said, I think a, a three... Yeah, three is as good as I'm going to give on that one. Just because confusion, uh, it it just it kind of wrecked it for me a little bit. But let's move on to that play grade. Surely it's play grade. It's going to be all right. Yeah, it is. You're getting some fun characters. You're getting a lot of kit. Whether I like the kit or not, you might. And this is just my opinions, guys. And I, I respect all of yours. You're all entitled to have them. But I've been giving my experience uh, as far as my play grade for it. And while the figures are great, the kit's a, a bit of a nightmare. Uh, on the Twilight Guard, they don't sit well on that backpack. I like that backpack, but it doesn't hold those particular weapons very well. And those particular weapons were from a dark era of the beginnings of this line that I don't think anybody asked to see those again. I feel like you needed to get rid of those some more, Hasbro. And again, without doing a piece count on the back of the box, I don't know exactly how much I've been entitled to, but I feel like I've been given more than a fair share of two characters worth of kit. But I don't feel like, again, any consideration was given into who's going to get what kit and why when you're throwing in decoy holsters and blast effect ports on some but not all, an abundance of blast effects. I could go on. The play factor's there, but is it quality play factor? I don't necessarily agree. So maybe a four is better for the play factor on that grade than the five, I think. I think that would be more accurate. You know, great that you included it. I wish it made some sense. Outside of the less than subtle suggestion that we buy droves of these so that we could have sections and companies worth of snipers and heavy support gunners and then basic infantry. Because those are the loadouts you're giving us repeatedly over. Uh, and it's the only reason to add an M60 to this assortment is to try and show that. Uh, again... The M60 process was a telltale sign of, we'll just see if we can sell more of these by throwing in this kind of stuff. And I, I kind of find that to be uh, thinking less of us as a consumer uh, of our tastes, really. 
I wanted this shot closer up uh, just because I wanted to show you guys a better example of that face mask. There you go. Look at the sides of the black. Look at the top of the black on the lower jaw. Look beside, the, between the, the gaps. You can see that black mark on there. And that's what I'm talking about. Gold is a poor choice for this. Uh, that kind of stuff shows up and it really looks horrid for what they were trying to do, I think. Finally, it's the amount of confusion that this set provides that is really going to be the focus of the je ne sais quoi grade on this one. And confusion is the name of the game. These characters not just are at odds of being Joe and Cobra, a commander and a guard. They're at odds over their kit, who gets what. They're at odds over uh, who gets the most focus because to me, that Twilight Guard is hands down the carrier of this kit. Just as for some people, the Tiger Force uh, Roadblock and Tripwire set has an imbalance in that they wanted one and not the other. This one I feel is much stronger. The Twilight Guard is the far more desirable uh, figure in this set. And that's not to say that the Steel Corps Commander is horrible, but I feel he is a very confused individual with what he was trying to communicate to his market. So that tack, that je ne sais quoi grade, I'm going to give it a squirrel because that's just as confusing as I found the weapons allocation and, and mystery choices with this set to be. Squirrel. Simple as that. All right, guys, that's going to do it. Thanks very much for watching, and we'll see you on the next Tactical Perspective.